Well, hi, everybody. Thanks for joining us today. Uh, this is part of our Young Leaders in Supply Chain and Logistics series. And today I'm joined by a young lady from Nigeria, Felusho Adigun. Hey, Felusho, how are you doing? Hi, Kim. I'm good. And you? Excellent. Thank you so much for asking. And uh, thank you for joining us. It's just about the end of your day now. So uh, great to see you. And what part of Nigeria are you calling from? Okay, so I'm calling from Lagos, and thank you so much for having me. Good stuff. And Lagos, of course, is the big city. Yes, yes, it's the commercial hub in Nigeria. So it's about, we have about 20 million people in Lagos, so it's quite well populated. And uh, yeah, so but it's, it's, it's a fun and good place to be. Yeah, we would Absolutely. look forward to having you sometimes in the future. <laughs> love to get there. Haven't made it to West Africa yet, but uh, love to get there for sure. So, Felicia, you're joining us as one of the young leaders in logistics and supply chain in the series. And uh, we traditionally like to start with our guests, giving us a bit of an insight into their upbringing, um, where they were brought up, what their influences were, how they got into supply chain. So, uh, yeah, by all means, where did it all start for for for, for, for Lucio? Okay, so thank you once again. So I, I currently work with um, Lixil as a leader for supply chain, and I manage the Sato brand. So Lixil, in short, is a maker of a paneering water and um, product housing products, which solves everyday um, people's challenges. And um, the Sato brand is a social brand for the for the company which is um, basically involved in providing proper sanitation to the com to communities who lack um, access to, to proper sanitation. So that's um, what I do now, who I work with. And then what I basically do is to manage the end-to-end -end supply chain for SATO, which starts from planning to manufacturing and then distribution. Yeah, so that's... Um, Talking about my background, my background, I would say that um, I've been pretty much all my life in as much as um, I got into supply chain randomly. But I would want to say that my upbringing has totally like trained me to, to be able to integrate well into this um, industry or, or function that I find myself in. So I grew up as, a, as the only girl. And I was born in Nigeria and I grew up as the only girl in a family of five. I have two brothers. So I've always had to like work with male boys all my, all my, <laughs> all my life <laughs> and, and play with boys. So I would say that that has, you know, really helped, as I've said earlier. So I am currently married and um. Yeah, so that's pretty much it about my, my, my childhood. And um, I studied computer science for my first degree. But at some point when I was getting into the workforce, I got a supply chain job as a material coordinator with a, with a downstream oil and gas company. And um, even though I really wanted to get into the IT world, as um, the, what we were told then is that was that IT is the end thing. But I mean, as fate would have it, I found myself in supply chain and, um, you know, having works there, it kind of uh, struck me that it's, it's a job that I really like, especially because as that then I was, you know, in charge of, you know, planning the materials that are being used for production of uh, the category I was handling it was lubricants. So at some point when I get to the um, gas stations, I didn't see the lubricants on the shelf. And I'm like, it's, it's fascinating that looking at those lubricants, I'm like, I made that happen in terms of if I hadn't planned for the for the for the caps or for the bottles or for even the basal and the additive that I used in manufacturing the the, the, the contents in itself those uh, products would not be on the shelf so it kind of made an impact in me and made me want to like uh, made me think that yes I think that I'm 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 suited for this um for this job and for this for this role yeah so awesome. that's pretty much it. Well done, yeah. and uh, yeah, it's it's a unique insight, and and so you've been involved with Total, Exxon Mobil, uh, two of the biggest oil companies in the world, and of course, what I do know about Nigeria is it's got a, a very large uh, industry sector base around uh, fossil fuels. Uh, so, from your perspective, um, what you know, tell us a little bit about that industry, uh, how dominant it is, 
And also I'm quite interested to know, is there any sort of a move to get away from fossil fuel, fuels into renewables, sustainability? Uh, what's happening there in Nigeria? Yeah, so, uh, yeah, we're, we're pretty much very dependent on fossil fuels. So even though there's a lot of advocacy around, you know, people moving from fossil fuel to renewables. So, yes, there's that... Um, there's that agitation, but um, the fuel is very much, um, very much what we're into now. But there are startup companies, you know, and a lot of you know social enterprises that you know really advocating for for renewable energy just for sustainability. And it's part of my ESG programs for a lot of organizations here. So, so yes, I see that uh, in the near future would would move. In as much as it might be slow, but gradually would move out of a fossil fuel. It's something that we all have to, you know, think about critically and move in that direction. Sure, yeah. sure. And what's what's happening in the in the broader supply chain? I mean, what are the what are the challenges that a country like Nigeria faces uh, in regards to supply chain in terms of movement of goods? Uh, are there any particular challenges that that you can share with us? Oh yes, I mean it's it's um in in this climb it's there are a lot of challenges, especially the one that relates with the, the infrastructures that we have on, on ground and um so that kind of causes uh, delays and um that's some that's too at the pot causes a lot of you know congestions but you know I know that um. This is it's something that's been lingering for quite some time now, quite some time now. And I know that the government is actively working on, you know, resolving it, especially the port congestions. I also know that for the main that a lot of ports in Nigeria are not functioning and we have like about one major one that is functioning well that a lot of people would prefer to move their goods through, which is the one in Lagos. So it's 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 really congested. But I know that um the government is currently working on the roads, the, the road infrastructure, just so that it can, you know, ease up a little bit. And I know that a lot of companies are looking through to towards using other means to move their goods out of the port in terms of badging and and, and a whole lot of, of other Methods, but yes, I, I know that it's it's been challenging, and for the fact that sometimes too the 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 process, the logistics process in this part of the world is sometimes not that organized. So, but I, I know that a lot of companies, especially startups, are working in this um in this um um area to ensure that it's more structured, it's more you know enticing, and it's a, a lot more seamless. Yeah, for for, for customers uh, and um, good stuff. Well, thanks for sharing that insight with us. And it's always interesting to to talk to people from different places, and many of our many of our people on the show will not have been to West Africa and possibly Nigeria. So it's great always to get that insight. I appreciate you sharing that with us. Um, so you're a, you're a young girl. You were brought up in a family full of boys. You've gone into an industry which has been dominated, I presume, in your part of the world as it is in many other parts of the world by by too many men. And uh, you're a young woman who's made your way and successfully so. So congratulations on what you've been doing. I see you, you've got yourself uh, incredibly uh, qualified as well. I've had a look at your background and you've got all sorts of qualifications in your craft. So well done on that. What I'd like to wrap Thank up you. with our guests... No, no, and, and what I'd like to wrap up with our guests uh, is to to any insights or advice for others. And b- because you're a woman uh, deep into supply chain, uh, what other what what sort of hints could you give, or tips or advice to other young women wanting to get into supply chain or logistics, whether it's in uh, in Nigeria or anywhere else? Okay, yeah, that's a, that's a that's a good um. Thing, it's a good question. I think the first thing that I would like to tell any young woman that is coming to supply chain is to, you know, ready to to be ready to get the work done, to be ready to get once uh, you, your your hands dirty. In terms of, um, sometimes it can be. I mean, the the job and the workload can be a bit overwhelming. But there's something that I, I've I've learned during the course of my career, and especially for my mentor, is that um, the reward of of doing a good job is is more work. So even though that may may sound it may sound harsh, but it it, it, ultimately, it, ultimately, it ultimately helps one to build character and to help one improve on in on one's. Uh, 
process. So yes, I would say that um, seek experience, that is very, very key in this industry. And then the other thing is that um, just like, um, I mean, you've mentioned and I've, I've also had to, you know, um, fine tune my craft and by pursuing some professional qualification certification. So right, I would also say that, you know, there are a number of certifications out there that um, the young women can, you know, try to do just to, you know, have some credibility to have credibility in this, um, in this field. Yes. And I would say ultimately be ready to learn. That's what one of the key things, be ready to learn and then do not be afraid to take on um, complex problems because that's, a very good way to to learn because if, if if it's challenging enough, trust me, you would always learn something from it, and you'll be a better person for it. Yeah. So. Hey, that's great, Felicia. So, uh, look, thanks for sharing all of that, and it's great to speak to you. Thanks for taking the time. So, Felicia Adigon, uh, supply chain expert in Lagos, Nigeria. Thanks for taking the time to talk to us, and we look forward to following your career along the way. Thank you so much for having me, Kim. Thank you. All right. Thanks again, Felicia. Thank you.